Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, here, political parties already in turmoil over Brexit are now preparing for European elections, uh, which the UK seems likely uh, to have to participate in. Well, it's just over three years since John Longworth left his, left his post as Director General of the British Chambers of Commerce uh, so he could freely express his support uh, for leave. He went on to become co-chairman of Leave Means Leave uh, and uh, this weekend uh, said that he's going to stand in these European elections for the Brexit party. Uh, in case you're having problems keeping up, that is Nigel Farage's new political party. Uh, well, Mr Longworth uh, is uh, with me now. Well, first of all, uh, a number of uh, parties to choose from on the Brexit wing. You've got uh, UKIP, you've got Brexit, uh, you've got the Conservative Party. I mean, why have you gone for uh, Brexit? Well, it's certainly be a new experience for me, as I've never been a politician before, and I've always decried politicians, quite frankly. But that's one of the reasons why the Brexit Party is attractive. I'm very, uh, you know, pleased that I've been asked to uh, put myself forward. Uh, the thing is with the Brexit Party is it's trying to create a new approach to politics so that we actually have candidates who are not the same old, same old career politicians, but people who have actually done things in life, who've been in business and done other things in life. And I think as the candidates are rolled out for the Brexit Party, you'll see that there are a lot of substantial people who are... But what, what, what are you actually going to do? What is a vote for John Longworth going to uh, do on Brexit? Well, within the context of the European elections, I think it's a safe place for people to actually uh, express their views on how Brexit has been handled. It's, not, it's not safe to vote for the Tories or UKIP? It's a, it's, 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 it's a safe place where people can express a view without the risk of riots on the streets, without the risk of having a situation where the referendum is reversed or there's some sort of new referendum which is very divisive, and without, of course, a general election. So it gives people the opportunity to well, express that's the a election. view. election. It's not particularly voting for Brexit. And why do you think there are going to be riots on the street? Well, I don't. I mean, I hope, sincerely, that there wouldn't be. But the fact of the matter is, of course, that people are very, very frustrated. And what we've got to do is to channel that frustration through the ballot box, through the democratic process. So it's very important that actually this European election goes ahead because it's an, it's an opportunity for people who are actually furious to give yeah. a view on the way in which Brexit well, has been handled. What's wrong with voting for UKIP or the Tories then? Well, what's wrong with voting for either of the major parties, of course, is they've made a complete hash of it and that the majority of their MPs in Parliament are Remainers who've done everything possible to frustrate and undermine the Brexit process. When it comes to UKIP, uh, UKIP and the Brexit Party are like chalk and cheese in terms of the people who are involved. And, you know, parties are more than the sum of their parts, but the parts are very important. But, I mean, this is a step for you because uh, at the time of the referendum you were associated with the official campaign uh, for leaving the European Union. You've now switched to the provisional campaign, the, <laughs> the, the, the Nigel uh, Farage, uh, Aaron Banks side of the argument. So you've become more radical, have you? Well, first of all, let's be very clear, Aaron Banks has nothing to do with this whatsoever. The second thing to say is that when the referendum was won by the people who voted to leave by 1.4 million people in the biggest plebiscite, two-thirds of constituencies in the UK, three-quarters in England and Wales voted to leave. Would have been a landslide in an election, of course. Uh, I still didn't believe that the establishment would allow us to do it, which is why I decided to get involved with Leave Means Leave and ended up as chairman of Leave Means Leave until... Uh, well, still am chairman of Leave Means Leave, of course, right up until the march to leave, which arrived in uh, Parliament Square only a couple of weeks ago. The fact of the matter is that that yeah. move, actually, towards Leave Means Leave was essentially me saying that we need to actually move this thing forward and that the major parties can't be trusted. Now, uh, what are the practicalities of all this? I mean, I, I, it's come on us uh, as a bit of a surprise, these European elections. I mean, how's it going to work? When, when, have you, when do we know if you're a candidate, what, what area you're going to be standing in, uh, and all the rest of that? Well, you know now I'm going to be a candidate, because we've declared it. So uh, you've been accepted? Yeah. I've been accepted, yes. Um, I'm proposing to stand for, for Yorkshire, because that's where I live, 
that's my uh, home uh, and it seems sensible to me to actually represent the people amongst whom I live. So, you know, having the election is very important because it's an opportunity for people to give their view. But it's also very important, actually, if the UK is going to be in the EU for any length of time now, that we actually yeah. have people in Brussels who will represent the interests of the UK. Is it the truth that the whole sort of air is going out of the balloon of, of leaving the European Union? We've had three delays now, I think, in the date we were going to leave. Uh, we've got these splits of parties... Uh, uh, on the right, um, and we've got opinion polls showing that people aren't too keen on it either. Well, I think there's a real risk that uh, Brexit will not happen. If it doesn't happen, of course, I, you know, you can't, you can't imagine what, what the reaction will be from 17.5 million plus people. Sigh of relief, perhaps. Well, there'll, so be, there'll, there'll be a lot of people, of course. I mean, one of the things that the establishment are doing is actually wearing people down. Um, people are fed up to the back teeth of this whole thing. But the fact of the matter is, Britain voted to leave the European Union by a significant yeah, but number. Voted again, I mean, just suppose that uh, non-Brexit parties get more votes than Brexit parties in this election. Would you accept that as a verdict to the people? Well, it's not a verdict to the people on the... Re the only verdict of the referendum is a referendum. So, so have another referendum, what's wrong with and that? It, and if we have another referendum, of course, it would be a really big undermining of democracy in the UK. Because... Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the way the UK democratic system works is that you have an election, say, and then the government govern, and if you don't like them, you throw them out at the next election. To have an election, a referendum, in which the result of the referendum has not been implemented, and then have another referendum would be like saying, after an election, I don't like the party that's been elected, we'll have another one next week. Okay, John Longworth, thank you uh, very much indeed. Well, let's put that to someone who takes a rather different view. Uh, joining us now is uh, uh, Gina Miller. Uh, she was the founder of Lead, not Leave, uh, and brought the case against the government that led to this process of a meaningful vote. Uh, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Uh, 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 Gina Miller, um, you're going to be standing in these European Parliament elections. A lot of people would like to see you as a candidate. No, I won't be. Um, one thing I will say, listening to John, is that uh, all the cries of the EU being undemocratic, you can now see that there is an election process that happens. People may not have been aware of it before, but they are now. Um, but no, I'm not going to be standing in this election or for a political party anytime soon. Which, which one do you support, though? Uh, we've got a, got a panoply of parties, Liberal Democrats, Greens, uh, uh, Change UK, uh, some Conservatives, some Labour, Labour MPs. What, what, what's your advice to voters? I'd say that these elections are actually different from a general election because individuals you choose um, in, in a proportional representative system, so the voting system itself is different, will actually be representing us in the European um, institutions and Parliament. So I think it's important that they have um, an understanding of that. So I would say the candidates of those I've seen so far, um, and I'm aware of that apply to Change UK, I think would be the ones that I would back at this moment in time, because they do have more of a progressive agenda. And I do think there needs to be change and progression in the EU. What about that argument we just heard from John Longworth saying, look, this, if we had another referendum, it would be undemocratic because uh, the last referendum has not been implemented yet? Yes, John, John repeats a lot of things that a lot of um, the Leave politicians who I think are very, being very irresponsible in the messages they're still giving now, three years later. Um, we, how can a vote be undemocratic? The whole argument is just nonsensical. Um, giving people a vote is not undemocratic, it is the most democratic thing you can do. And the idea that MPs have been frustrating Brexit, they actually voted to trigger Article 50, they voted for the EU Act withdraw so that we could withdraw, they voted for the withdrawal bill. So I don't see where the evidence is that they're frustrating Brexit. What they're doing is their job and scrutinising the government and this woefully poor withdrawal agreement that they've brought back. So MPs are actually representing people as they should do. And saying they should be um, inciting violence against MPs is the most irresponsible thing any politician and any new party, the Brexit party, can be doing. I think they should be shamed, they should be ashamed of their messaging. And uh, what, do you what mean they're, they're inciting violence against MPs. Well, what, what Mr. Farage said last Friday, um, I think is, is very irresponsible. Um, what? When you think 
Um, he was in, well. One, he said that uh, there should be uh, uh, put the fear of God to MPs. I mean, MPs are already suffering from an increased amount of violence and, and, and threats against them and abuse. And that sort of language is not helping anyone. That is very irresponsible in already a heated debate. And I he think it's... He, me he meant the fear of God uh, in electoral terms, that there would be a lot of angry people uh, who would want to punish MPs at the ballot I box. I've listened and listened. Um, you can't take it back after you've said it. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, to, to justify it, it was very, it was received as such. And I can tell you um, that when politicians such as Mr. somebody like Mr. Farage on a platform that is very public says things like that, it does incite people's behaviour and it does result in increased violence against individuals. So it has to be conducted in a very responsible way if this party goes forward. And I think it's just being all politicians and all commentators have to be responsible in what they say. But you are calling now for the revoking, the revocation of Article 50, i.e. stopping the Brexit process. And can't you understand that the majority of people uh, who voted in that referendum for leave will feel robbed if they never get a taste of the Brexit they voted for? I have recently been calling for this because after three years and travelling around the country, and I would agree with Mr Longworth that everyone is exhausted, everyone's fed up of this. It is like sort of death by a thousand cuts, this whole Brexit process. And uh, it is, it's about time that we, we are re reasonable and sensible of where we are. Where There is no Brexit bonus of 350 on the side of a battle bus. We're actually losing more than twice that, 800 million a week. In the total cost of Brexit to date from the Bank of England is somewhere around 40 billion a year. We could build 22 state-of-the-art hospitals with that money. And all the things that we should be talking about that led to people voting, I've been up and down the country on a regular basis, uh, week after week, and people are crying out for change in their communities, in housing, in education. We saw just yesterday that 40% of teachers say they wouldn't stay in the profession. We have crisis after crisis being ignored and being pushed out of the agenda and off the headlines because of Brexit. It's enough time now. We need to start looking after our country. And that's why I think that revoking as a conversation now is something that more and more people are telling me, not just I'm suggesting to them, but they're saying enough is enough after three years. Finally, uh, will we be seeing you campaigning for Change UK? And no, I'm not politically at the moment. Um, I'm pushing for the Brexit process. I think it's really important. Um, I haven't spoken to them. They haven't spoken to me. Uh, if I was approached, I'd have a conversation with them. But I think it's very important that people are aware that this is an opportunity for them to really express their views and to get involved. You know, we must always ensure that we vote. We mustn't take it for granted. Millions of people around the world don't have the opportunity to vote. We mustn't just neglect that responsibility. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Gina Miller there, joining us.